name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. In our Gospel reading today, we hear of two healing miracles. In one of them, Jesus wasn't even asked to do the miracle. The woman in question grabbed his clothes in order that she might be healed. He brings us healing as soon as we want it. As we come before him today, needing to be healed of all our sinfulness, we can ask for forgiveness and know that he will give it to us. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, and receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray for God's mercy upon us. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the living. For he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them. And the dominion of Hades is not on earth, for righteousness is immortal, for God created us for incorruption and made us in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. The response to the psalm is, To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. 
O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? With the dust, praise you or declare your faithfulness. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 8, uh, verses 7 to 15. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I'm giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord endures forever. The word of the Lord is the good news announced to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped 
and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people from the leader's house came to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and Holy Spirit the Comforter. Amen. Masks can be both a boon and a bane, can't they? Of course, we know their purpose. They are to protect others from anything we may be passing on, but also an initial aid to our own protection from others. But they can certainly feel like a bit of a barrier at times, a barrier to natural interactions with our friends and acquaintances and create problems of clear speech lack of understanding and devoid of facial expression. But we do understand the current need to wear them to help the community towards healing and health. In today's narrative, with two intertwined stories of healing, we learn that Jesus is traveling back by boat towards the west side of the Sea of Galilee and we know there's a great crowd awaiting him. In the midst of, the, in that midst of that, there are two desperate people eager for his arrival. There is Jairus, a Jewish religious re leader, with a role that's perhaps akin between a cross between a church warden and a lay reader. He will be responsible for arranging and perhaps conducting worship, as well as building maintenance. He prostrates himself in desperation at Jesus' feet, pleading and begging him to come to the house in a last attempt to heal his dying daughter. Jairus asked Jesus to lay hands on her, which was an unusual request among Jews. But Jesus' compassion made him willing to push through that swelling crowd to heal her. 
and there is a woman, unnamed and unknown. And that's how she wanted it to stay. She was woefully ashamed of her long-standing health condition, which had plagued her for more than 12 years. Her health problem, which was probably related to menstruation, made her an outcast from society. The view of menstruation within Judaism meant that women spent the time of their period apart from others and then ritually cleansed themselves with prayers and washing before returning to full involvement with the life of their families. This puts me a bit in mind of the tradition of churching of women in the Christian faith, which originates from these Jewish traditions, I suspect and where women were expected to attend a church ceremony of blessing after childbirth. Of course, they were giving grateful thanks for a safe delivery. I encountered a similar prohibition on young women even today, when, as an RE teacher, I took groups of pupils to visit the Islamic mosque in Nottingham. Notices forbade menstruating females from entering the mosque. I was a bit naughty. I told them to come inside anyway. So then, can we imagine how this long-term sick woman felt? Excluded from social contact due to her hemorrhaging, no right of access to the temple, not even to the outer courtyard, ritually unclean, probably no chance of marriage, no children, perhaps no companion in life, even no friends, and now no money, all spent trying to get well. How despairing must she have been? No wonder the woman was determined to keep her problem secret. No surprise that she determined not to ask for healing from Jesus, but to break through the barrier of rejection by stealth. She must have felt the crowd was her cover and she might approach Jesus secretly. The crowd were all focused on getting their own needs met by Jesus. We learn from her story that physical power could flow out from Jesus without his conscious choosing. Her silent faith was enough to summon forth healing. And Jesus knew what had happened. Not content with this wordless contact, however, Jesus seeks her out and he wants to know her story. For he knows she's broken the rules and yet she blesses him, blesses her and calls her daughter. So by doing so, is welcoming her back into the society of the Jewish family. How elated must she have been at that? Back into society, back into relationships. Is there a little danger that we can be a bit like those in the crowd? Are we sometimes so focused on getting the Lord to meet our needs that we fail to notice the spiritual and material needs of others? While there's obviously nothing wrong with having our gaze fixed on Jesus, we must also make sure that our eyes are on those who are equally made in God's image. And we must see those whom Jesus sees and not put up barriers that prevent them from meeting Jesus for themselves. Now, while all this is happening, of course, Jairus is winning Jesus forward through that crowd, that he wants Jesus might be in time to heal his daughter. The needs of the woman must have felt like a life-threatening distraction. Then the dreaded news comes. His daughter has died. They are too late. Except they're not. 
Of course they're not. It is as if the original choice of choice of Jesus to acknowledge them and to heal the girl still prevails. He wants to accompany them. Even death cannot prevent this healing. Though, Jesus does not intend that the story of him raising the dead should spread. Quite a strange suggestion. He doesn't want to be told about this particular incident. He has to be guarded if he is to continue God's work on earth. He is already famous in an almost out of control way, as the huge crowns indicate. His concern in this incident is for the life of this family. And it gives her amazed parents a very practical instruction. Give her something to eat. Perhaps we too are called to step outside our own comfort zones and lend a hand in a practical way. Or by stepping across societal barriers to help people meet Jesus through our love and concern for them. You know what Mother Teresa said, Christ has no hands now but our hands, no feet now but our feet to do his work on earth. We have already as a church community provided the use of our parochial hall for the Keyworth Food Bank. It may come as a surprise to some there is a need for such things in this sort of area. But there is a need, and not just a physical need. People are also hungry for a spiritual food, even if they themselves do not recognise it. The material society does not seem to satisfy their inner yearnings for peace and meaning in their lives. Just like the woman in the story, we cannot keep our secret to ourselves. Perhaps we use social, religious or cultural barriers to keep God at a bit of arm's length. But soon we will need to take off our masks and spread God's healing love to all those we can through practical initiative and personal interaction with those yet to meet our risen Lord. In the Gospel reading, and in Mark's Gospel in general, Jesus has few comfort zones, and perhaps flying in the faith, uh, face of the uh, religious leaders, he is no respecter of the social, the cultural, or the religious barriers of his time. Yet he breaks taboos and conventions so he can meet people where they are, and address their needs, healing, spiritual needs, whatever they ask. How do we respond to those who reach out for help? How can we actively welcome people into this treasured faith, this Christian faith? How can we be more faithful disciples? We do, of course, start with prayer. So let us pray a brief prayer. We give you thanks, Lord, that your healing ministry transcended cultural and social barriers. We pray for a cleansing of all prejudice and for those whose illness or situation distances them from others. We pray especially for the mentally ill, the homeless, for refugees, and all on the fringes of society. May they and all creation know your healing and accept him love. And may we all reach out where we can in your name. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in God in the words of the We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, whom the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers. You are the source of all holiness, generous God. We wonder at your son's healing powers, the time he gives to every single thing he does, and the way your gifts to us can be shared with others. We pray we may bless others as you have blessed us. Lord, in your mercy. God of our church and benefice, create in us, we pray, a generosity of spirit which does you justice, a certainty of hope, and a love which knows no boundaries. In our benefice, we pray for those who live or work on Maple Close, Lilac Close, and Rowan Drive. May we share the abundance of the life you have given us so your light shines as a ray of hope in the breaking of the bread this morning. Lord, in your mercy, Holy One, lift up our eyes so that we can see the radiance of your creation. Open our eyes to how we are harming your world and prompt us into action. Help us to be part of healing your creation. We pray especially for the areas which need our attention at present and which we neglect at our peril, including our overuse of plastic, our wasteful habits, and our misuse of the resources in our ecosystem. Give us courage to speak out and act in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, you became poor so that we might become rich, reaching across the boundaries of time and space. In our world of inequality, we pray that you would show us how to share our riches with those who are in need. We pray for people who seek asylum in our land. We cannot begin to understand the things they have been through. We pray for a deep sense of your understanding and for practical ways to show your love. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray for those who work long hours with very little money, for those whose livelihoods have been ruined by disease, disaster, oppression, and conflict, for those who have no security, no comfortable home to go back to. In our own community, we pray for those who give their time and resources, working through food banks, outreach centers, and charities. We ask you to pour your blessing on Framework, the Friary Drop-In Center, and our local endeavors. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick. We ask your healing blessing on all. 
We pray for those especially suffering from COVID and its long-term effects, for the medics and researchers who all fight this world's worldwide epidemic. Be merciful to those who see no end in sight. We give thanks for the vaccine programs and the hope that they bring. We pray for the sick and the infirm, the troubled and the depressed. And in a moment of quiet, I invite you to name silently to God anyone in need of your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, Eternal One, we pray for those who have recently died, remembering especially Mary Saywood, and those who are in the Book of Remembrance, Brian Bell, Dorothy E. Cobb, and Peggy Lunn. As we give thanks for their lives, we ask that you give hope to the hearts of those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, 
drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the mother of God, Mary Magdalene, the apostles and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one. Lamb of God, you take the grace of the Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Yesterday, I was one of a very few people allowed to be in Derby Cathedral as we celebrated Nicola's ordination. If you haven't been able to watch that yet, it is available on the Derby Cathedral um, YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and search for Derby Cathedral, you'll find it, as well as in the note that I sent out. It's the 10 o'clock service they had to do, divide people up into groups of four, so they ran through, I think, four ordination services yesterday and another couple today. And do pray for those people from our own diocese who will be ordained deacon and priest this next weekend. Twenty-five years ago, I was going through that myself. We'll be celebrating that on Wednesday. If you haven't booked a place, I'm sure Anne can find one or two more places, or just have a mention it to Penny as you leave church today. If you've booked a place and refreshments and haven't mentioned if you have any dietary needs, um, do make sure Anne knows about that too, um, because otherwise you'll just get um, the, the standard delivery um, of food. It's coming in boxes, so you get what's in your box, um, and um, that's how it's going to be. Let's stand as we pray for God's blessing. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.